Good morning, knitters. You're watching Recreational Knitting Podcast. My name is Karen, and this is where I discuss all my yarny adventures with you. Uh, it's been uh, a few days since I actually sat down and talked with you. But first, chocolate. Yeah, it's been that kind of a week. That's a good size bar, no? Yeah. Get on to some knitting. This week, I attended a class at a Kiwi's Yarn, and it was about reading your knitting. And those of us that have been knitting a while realize that that's really a skill that you must develop. Otherwise, you can't correct your mistakes, um, and you'll get frustrated and say the heck with this, this is too hard, all of that. This class was geared for pretty much a beginner, but again, I'm of the philosophy that you always learn something from a class. If it's from a fellow classmate, it's from the teacher, lots of ways that you can, can do that. This is this was an amazing class, I have to say. She gave us a swatch on tiny needles. Most of her class have taken other things from her and they are fearful of um, sport, fingering weight, and tiny needles. They're very intimidated with that. They, they do well with, you know, worsted weight and size, you know, the big chunky, all of that. They're, they're good with that. But where she saw they were having most difficulty was with little things, which I adore. I love size zero, one needles, making socks. And of course my fingering and sock weight yarns are ridiculous. Um, I'm just, going to leave it there. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, so she gave us a swatch on, a, you know, live stitches on a needle and said, here, fix this. She started off by saying how many rows of stockinette, how many rows of um, garter stitch, how many rows of seed, seed, seed or moss stitch were in this swatch. Um, and pretty much everyone, you know, had trouble with that. She made sure that we knew that you don't count your cast on and you do count the row on the needle. So those of you that are newish to knitting, those are two very important things to take from this particular class. I don't feel like I'm giving away all the, all the tips and techniques. But those are two very important things that you have to remember. When you're counting rows, you count the row on your needle and you do not cast, you, uh, count the cast on. I think we've all made that mistake. And um, use it as you will. Another thing that she uh, said is that uh, I, I can't help you. You need to know what a purl stitch looks like and a knit stitch looks like. Now, she gave us um, you know, great big super chunky yarn and super chunky needles. She gave us that. This is a purl. This is a knit. This is a purl. This is a slip. This is um, uh, you know, um, a stitch that you've dropped. So she showed us what it looked like on her big knitting. She said, now, go back to your swatch and go and correct those mistakes. And of course, when some of the people got to, I need to make this a purl stitch, they had difficulty. So, um, yeah, it was, it was in seed stitch, which is always a challenge, I think, for a lot of people, because if you're not careful, it's gonna turn into rip. Seed stitch is knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and then on the next row, knit 
it's the opposite. You knit your pearls and you purl your knits. I think I got that right? Yeah. So it was challenging for a lot of us and we ended up spending the majority of the time in the class doing that and she and her sister went around the class and helped. It was a great class. She also <clears throat> gave us um, a pattern with the class and of course we had to buy our yarn. And if you're not aware, when you take a class at a yarn shop, especially a small business yarn shop, you must buy your yarn there. It's not a rule, it's not a law, it's just the right thing to do. These people are putting on a class, hoping that they'll um, make better knitters who will want to come back to their yarn shop and buy more yarn. They have a business, they're not in it to give it away. Um, so, you know, be kind and make sure that you definitely buy your stuff at the yarn shop. That's just, yeah. Anyway, the, this is architecture. I don't know whether you can even see how that's spelled. It's A-R-C-H-I-T-E-X-T-U-R-E. -E. And I believe that this is um, a pattern that they specifically give to um, yarn shops. I, I could be wrong. But this says it's not for uh, it's not for resale, so I'm not sure that you can actually get this. But what you can see that there's ribbing, there's garter, there's all kinds of stitches in this, very textured, and this is the yarn that I chose, and I am. <laughs> very very early in this but do you see that little almost of it's starting to look like a v that's the middle of the scarf and with your decreases and increases you're going to have a scarf that has a point at either end it's lovely it's a lovely pattern this is uh Plymouth yarn with mulberry silk, and I forget the name of it, and I don't have the tag. Um, yeah, that must have slipped out of my bag. But it's very slippery, and I have wooden needles to put it on because it, the, this is too slippery. These are my chai goo, and I'm just going to have to go to fixed wooden needles. So, But it's a beautiful pattern. I look forward to finishing it. So that's a, kind of a new cast on, but it's class related. But um, this is the shape without showing too much. This is the shape of the scarf. And we have started here or here on the other side. And where that little V is, it's going to take us up and then we'll do a border on each row, on each side. So, that was wonderful. That was definitely worth the money. And she gave us, you know, a really nice handout of reading your stitches. And she talks um, about what a knit stitch looks, you know, reverse stockinette, what a knit sti stitch looks like on the back side, what it looks like on the front side, what a pearl looks on the front side, what it looks like on the back side. So that you can uh, read your knitting much better. So, and she has things in here like this where you're going to identify the two, the pearl and the, the knit rows. And then she gave a nice, because it's in the pattern, how to, 
how to do an ML1, uh, ML left and ML right. And that was very nice to have because I believe that a lot of the people that are taking the course did not know. So that was a great investment of my time and money. And I hope that sometimes you, you have the opportunity to take something like that. Um, if you're in a knitting guild or a group, that might be something that somebody just volunteers to say, you know, next week I will talk about reading your knitting. And even though you might be an experienced knitter, that might not be, don't take it for granted that you know everything about it. And she did not get into lace, which is something that I really could have benefited from. But she did talk about the basics in the time that we had. So two thumbs up to a Kiwi's Yarn in Concord, North Carolina with Diana and Debbie are the owners and they are from New Zealand. Wonderful, worth a trip. They are great people. You'll learn, they've been knitting since they were five and six years old. And they really know a ton of things about knitting. So no matter, you know, if you just have a, a question and you're in the area, go in, meet them, tell them I sent you. I'll show you a few of my works in progress that I've really been working on um, as much as I could get to this week. It's been a busy week. And a couple nights I went to bed pretty early for me, um, worn out from some PT and some social events that we're just not used to staying up late. So this is Petite Knit uh, Anchor Summer Shirt. I've made a couple of these. Uh, one and both of those were in Remix, Barocco Remix. This is in Cascade. Let's see if I have a tag in here. I do not. Um, I've talked about it before. It's 60% cotton and 40% acrylic. And this is in the baby blue. And this is where I'm at at this point. I've done all of the pattern for lack of a better word. It's not really a pattern, but I'm still, I am working on the raglan increases presently. And I think I was right here the last time I showed you. So again, not a whole lot, but you know, once you get 300 stitches, you're not gonna see a lot of progress. But um, yeah, I, I'm i not sure I really like this uh, yarn. Not sure how it's gonna work out. I'll make it and I'll wear it uh, because it's cotton and it'll probably work out just fine for Florida. Um, just not thrilled with the color. Um, you know, when you buy something online, you know, the colors just always don't work. I don't think it's a bad color on me. It just doesn't do much for me. But, you know, a pair of white pants, little skirt, it'll be fine. Dark blue. Anyway, that's the Anchor Petite Knit Summer Shirt. And this is a, a sock. This is a sock yarn bag because it's all I have. I don't have bigger bags. Um, but it says, today's good mood is sponsored by yarn. How true is that? I, it doesn't take much to make me happy. Yarn and jewelry and an occasional chocolate bar, good. But this is by simplysocksyarn.com. If you've not been to her website, she's got great sock yarn and she's got some DK weight now um, in the last year. 
check her out. She has good sales. Um, and she has a lot of European, you know, workhorse sock yarn as well as hand dye. Check her out. The next one I have to show you, work in progress, is my Isabel Kramer Yume. And this is the best picture I've got right now. I don't know where the real big picture is, sorry. You can either do it short sleeve, which I think I'm going to do, or this arm is cut off, but it's knit long sleeve. Um, I really do like this. I don't know whether you can see the lace work of this short pattern. And this is where mine is. is this is the front and this is the back this is where I showed you last time and it's embarrassing to tell you how many times I've knit the lace portion of this to try to get the right count <sighs> yeah and as those of you that knit lace you know one one mistake at the first row is going to throw you all off. So, yeah, it was embarrassing. So, um, we're, we're through that and we're on the raglan increases now. I think I'll be able to, to actually knit this sweater now. <laughs> Thank you to Diana at A Kiwi's Yarn for setting me straight and finding where I made the mistake. Yeah, this is, um, I need to add a new one. This is knit in a United by Kingsland. Uh, cotton and, and lamb's wool, beautiful yarn, love it. This next one you've been seeing, and I was hoping to have this done. This is made in Upcycle Alpaca Blend. This I purchased at Knit Picks, and I have two balls left. So we know we're getting close. Can you hear that rain? It's ridiculous. I've got that much of the sleeve done. Doesn't look like much. There's a lot of decreases going on. So hopefully this will start to move. Um, this is the front. I did a little bit different neck because I didn't want my neck to be higher. Things around my neck, oh, make me nuts. But haven't started this one. made a little progress on that. So this is um, pretty much what I wanna work on this week. I said that last week, didn't I? Um, but really, it's true. Um, this, is, this is what I'd like to finish because this is winterish weather and I, it, I just need to, to get it done. So hopefully, you'll see a finished object next week. Okay, that's it for the whips that I've worked on. How are you doing on your whips? Make sure that if you're entered in the Whip Be Gone, and I'll put it here, 2023, Whip Be Gone 2023, make sure you get over to my Ravelry group, post your pictures of your fin finished objects. Soxy Nana Alice, that's you. you. You make sure you put all those beautiful things you're finishing. Um, those of you that don't follow Soxy Nana Alice, she has a great podcast. She's a great person and a prolific knitter. Um, she lives in Winnipeg, Canada, in the middle of bitter cold. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's a great podcaster and make sure you check her out. She's trying to grow her channel, just like I'm trying to grow mine. And if you guys can comment, like, subscribe to the, the little podcasters. It helps us grow and helps the knitting community grow. Let me put this back in the bag. This is hysterical. I don't have any big sweater bags. This is 
that's why I'm keeping my sweater in patient belonging bag when Luke had his surgery. That's it for the whips. I'll talk to you a little bit about acquisitions. Yeah, it's been fun. When I went to my class at Achilles Yarn, I bought unnecessarily some yarns. They had Malabrigo on sale. What's a girl to do? I mean, come on. This is Bobby Blue <clears throat> in the, <clears throat> excuse me, Aurora, Arroyo, however you would say it. It's a sport DK weight. I've been wanting to get this. I really would love to make a whole sweater out of this. Don't think that's gonna happen. Malabrigo, but um, I thought maybe some fingerless mitts, the mitts that I showed you the last podcast where there were five free patterns in February. If you didn't see that, go back and look at it. There's a, a pair of mitts that this would look really beautiful in. And I love navy. While this isn't really true navy, it's very close. It's, it's, it's a light navy. Anyway, um, if you've never worked with Malabrigo, go into a yarn shop, see if they have it. It's beautiful, lovely. It's a twist, it's twisted. Um, I think this is more sport weight. I've made a couple shawls out of this Aurora. Oh, oh, how is it? Arroyo, okay. A um, couple Oh, he uh, beautiful, beautiful yarn. So anyway, that was my first purchase. It was on sale. Come on. This was not on sale, but I have heard rumor that they are discontinuing this kind of yarn. This is United by Queensland. And this is what I'm making my Yume sweater by Isabel Kramer out of. It's 55% lamb's wool and 45% cotton. And this is the colorway Robin's Egg. Isn't that beautiful? It's lovely to work with. And being in um, Florida, I know that I'll have a summer top that this can be included in. Um, I was thinking, perhaps a color work. Uh, this could be part of the color work. So, yeah, I'd rather do it in wool, but you know, when you have 98% humidity, again, what's a girl to do? That's one acquisition. The second one came in a nice pretty pink package and it's from Ruby and Rose's Yarn. I had never heard of her but she's in Lafayette, Indiana, where I did part of my graduate studies. I started a PhD program at Purdue. Decided, oh no, we're not gonna do that. So it was too research oriented and I wanted to work with children or adults. So I went, I heard about this from another podcaster and I cannot tell you who it was. Here we go, Crinkle. Enjoy it or hate it. It's the first time I've seen her yarn and I got a classic Christmas collection, which was on sale. And this is 85% Merino, 15% nylon. Each one of them is a 87 yards. And these are the colors. What do you think? They looked a little more vibrant on the internet, but I can certainly live with this. I love this color, this I love. Not a fan of this color, have to say. Mint, love mint chocolate chip ice cream, not a fan of this color. But the others are great. This is a, a dusty lavender. 
Very nice. Love it. So that's what I got again on sale. And this was on sale as well. This is her soft rose base, which is 8515, 437 yard. And this was a one of a kind. And I thought it was a nice neutral that I could put with something else in a shawl. You know, you always have those wild yarns and then you need something to tone it down. And this looked like it might be that yarn. It's beigey, pinky, with a little bit of purple and some brown specks. And there's even a little touch of some green in there. But it reads, obviously, as a tonal. And very soft. Nice, nice base. So again, Ruby and Roses yarn. Go check her out. She's from Lafayette, Indiana. Um, great service. She just got married. Uh, she had it on her website when I ordered this right after Christmas that um, she was going to go get married, not to expect anything anytime soon. So, and I just received this yesterday. So she had a wedding, went on a honeymoon, and boy, is she back and ready to go. So, again, enjoy. How's my furnace coming on? Sorry. It's about, you know, 36 degrees or something ridiculous with rain pouring steadily. That's a nice word to use. What have we been doing? We have, uh, let's see, Saturday night, we met my brother and sister-in-law out at a restaurant. That's how good Luke is doing and or a sports bar I shouldn't say really a restaurant sports bar where we watched the Giants and Philadelphia football game my brother-in-law is from New York City and he continues to support the New York City area teams silly man anyway uh, American football we had a couple drinks, we had some wings, we ordered a pizza. It was great fun. Uh, we st it was very cold that night, extremely cold. And I was sorry that I didn't put some of my woolens on, but I thought we're going into a sports bar. It's probably gonna be hot, you know, a lot of people milling around and it wasn't. They really, um, I left my coat on most of the time. <laughs> I think I'm just at the stage of life where um, I'm going to be cold. Maybe it's just North Carolina. Yeah. But anyway, we watched the uh, Philadelphia Eagles win. They're my second team after the, the Ravens. And because I'm from the area and I can eat a cheesesteak like the rest of them. So we enjoyed that very much. The next day we went over to their home to watch a, another game. Uh, where it was a little more um, even, <laughs> we'll put it that way. The Giants got soaked, New York Giants. They got soaked for Saturday night. It was embarrassing, truly embarrassing. So we had a, uh, a social busy weekend and that was the first time really since Luke's surgery that we had gone out and done things. They have been over here and brought soup and yeah, and brought in a couple things grocery-wise for us. But overall, this that was the first weekend. This coming week, weekend, we're having, um, I'm, I'm not having, my sister-in-law is having my brother-in-law's uh, family in for his birthday. I don't know what it, I think it might be the 65th. I'm not sure. He's younger than, than she is by a couple of years. And um, I think, I I think she mentioned Medicare the other day, I'm not sure. But they um, are having their family in from all over, from New York and South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, DC. I think that's it. I think that's all that's coming. And we're going bowling on Thursday. <laughs> so that ought to be fun. I haven't bowled um, 
for probably seven years. And we bowled three games and I could barely walk the following day. Um, yeah, it was crazy what muscles you, you use in bowling that haven't been heard from for a long time. So we're gonna do that. And then they have a fish fry on, on Friday night. And then Saturday is the real birthday where they're going to fry a turkey. These people like fried foods, yeah. So my husband is in charge of the fried turkey. So we'll have a great weekend, I'm sure. And um, I won't have much to show you, unfortunately, probably next week. I am diligently working on all my works in progress and trying to finish a couple things but not having a whole lot of luck. Um, just not having a whole lot of time to, to, to do that. We've all been there. Anyway, I'm gonna be showing you some pictures of Big Bend National Park in Texas. That was our first national park after we left Florida. And it was the first time that I think I had, as an adult, seen cactus. So it was, it's, um, the pictures don't do it justice, but I hope that you enjoy. And I'll see you next time. Bye. I picked a winner a couple of weeks ago off of Ravelry. And Celeste has yet to, to contact me. So Celeste, I'll give you a week from today, today's the 25th, so I don't even know what that means. Seven days from today, if you haven't contacted me, I'll um, be selecting someone else for that prize. Make sure you get those pictures up there, finished objects, so you can be entered in um, and win some prizes. Yarn, patterns, needles, all the things.